If we analyze the classic gelled textures, we usually come across recipes that have a high sugar content. Why is this? Because historically, sugar was normally used as a preservative in this type of recipe. We have to consider that in the past 50, 60, 70 years ago, finding a display case to preserve a product was complicated. So sugar was normally used as a preservative. What's happened since? Historically, we've had an evolution. We've been incorporating new technologies to the production, but also to the preservation of our products. And this has meant we can dispose of the sugar that's often used in traditional recipes. That's why when we're formulating a recipe with the B-concept method, normally what we do is use, for example, the amount of sugar necessary to balance out the sweetness. Then if we need to, we can add other solids like fiber or use other techniques to stabilize the recipe, for example, to avoid synergesis. Also, it's true that working with classical recipes containing lots of sugar gives us a level of sweetness that isn't valued that much these days. Current trends for a long time now have been focused on reducing sugars due to their negative impact on the body. And not only that, but an excess of sweetness becomes tiresome in many of the tastings we do. This has caused us to really reconsider this idea of using so much sugar in recipes and instead try to directly reduce the sugar, the sweetness, to create more interesting contrasts. But also to balance out our recipes in terms of health parameters. Moving on, another factor to take into account would be the techniques that we normally use in classic recipes. Generally, gelation is used through gelling agents, such as HM pectins, for example, which need a lot of sugar to gel properly. Otherwise, gelatine is also used, but it doesn't give us such good results when freezing. Normally, what will happen is that the gelatine, through freezing and thawing, loses the ability to capture and bind water in this process. That's why these recipes usually give us problems with cineresis, for example. Today, in terms of technical ingredients like gelling agents, we can find ingredients that are very well developed and are very specific for certain types of use. This has helped us to optimize their use and make textures that are more interesting and more stable, such as those made with low methoxyl pectins. Low methoxyl pectins can be used with very little sugar and can gel and create very interesting textures without having an excess of dry extract, an excess of sugars, or an excess of sweetness in our recipes. They also provide very precise control in freezing and thawing, as well as textures that are perfectly balanced. We should also take into account that in classical processes, normally when we work with fruit, we're required to boil them. This means that through this cooking process, we lose very interesting characteristics, such as the color or the real aroma of the fruit. But working with new ingredients like the pectins we have today allows us, for example, to carry out gelation at 80 degrees Celsius, where at 80 degrees Celsius we achieve a correct hydration of the pectin and cool this mixture quickly to obtain a perfect gelation that's perfectly stable without negatively impacting the fruit or the main ingredients we're using in these gelés.